All right, hello everybody. I'm gonna jump in the screen and do an introduction. Hi, my name's Warren Flax. This is my mother, Deirdre Silver. She is the founder of Silver Brush Limited. Uh, my mom started this company 30 years ago, and the basic goal, I don't think my head's even in there. Um, basic goal of this company was to provide high-end, high-quality brushes to the U.S. marketplace. And uh, mom started the company in the basement of our, uh, basement of our house. And uh, now here we are 30 years later, from 1990 to 2020, and uh, we're selling the brushes all over the world. Many of you watching this video are watching us all around the world. Um, thank you for joining us in doing that. Um, and so instead of talking about specific products today, what we're going to focus on is tips and tricks for you for how to care for your brushes. We get so many questions. We get so many uh, frustrated artists who, you know, oh, I left it in water. Oh, I have this hardened... You know, acrylic, I left it you know, on the brush for <laughs> 12 months, six months. Um, it, we all have those issues, right, with, with brushes. And so uh, my mom has a lot of very, very simple techniques that you can use to, to help rescue the brushes, uh, to care for your brushes so that uh, you can keep the ones that you have. Uh, what I always like to say is if you do a great job taking care of the ones you have, then you'll have money to invest in some different kinds of brushes, some fun, unique shapes, uh, some different you know, styles, different uh, lengths, all sorts of different things that you can do with brushes. Uh, we have 37 different brush lines in our company alone. So uh, the better you take care of the ones you have, uh, you don't have to replace them. So uh, with that, I'm gonna introduce you to the brush lady, uh, my mom, Dee Silver, and I'm gonna run the camera and hopefully uh, not mess this up too much. So uh, what do you wanna tell everybody? Well, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. It's delightful to see you and, and hope you're well and you're staying safe. Um, there's lots to talk about when we talk about uh, how to take care of artist brushes. <clears throat> I've always felt that a really good fine artist brush is an investment. Whether you spend $10 or you spend $30 or $50 or more, um, it's something that you want to take care of and keep for many, many years. So let's begin on some very basic things. And some things that we've been asked about, I've been asked about over the years, and um, you know, I, I, it seems simple to me, but you know, I can understand why other people find it a head scratcher. And so let's begin with a simple one. So the first thing you're gonna do when you get your beautiful new brush, you love it, you think it's terrific, it comes with a cap on top. What do you do with the cap? You know what you should do with the cap? You should throw it away. Throw it away. I don't want you ever to use the cap again, because this is why. Caps if you put them on a brush, could start um, the um, oxidization and it starts to, could mildew actually the head. So you see this uh, gray fuzzy all over it the next time you go back to it. And that of course is just a matter of taking it off with your hands and it just cleans right off. But there's no reason to put the cap back on. The, the, if you take care of the head, it should do very, very well without the cap. The other thing that's bad about a cap is that when you're busy pushing it back on the top, very open times, you're gonna capture hair all around the side. And then guess what? You're gonna to say to yourself, oh, now what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna cut it off. Well, I don't want you to cut it off because that's part of what you've actually paid for. So it's important for you to take the cap, throw it away, and let's, let's move on with taking care of our brushes. So now you've got this lovely brush and you, you you want to paint with it, you want to take the sizing out of it, you want to make sure that it, it goes back and forth the way you want it to and it works in the medium that you need it to. I'm just going to crack this brush right now, I just took it out of the warehouse. This is extremely hot water and I'm cleaning this, this sizing out of here. If you want to put sizing back into it, maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later, but once you get the, the, once you get the sizing out and you've cleaned it up, the brush is ready to use. Remember, take that cap and throw it away. Now, something that happens very often, and this is a new, um, that's our silver white brush, I would have mentioned that to you, that comes with both long and short handles. And this is our new uh, bristle-on brush that we have now in the short handle. Uh, we've had it in the long handle for a very long time. It's the same thing. Take that cap and throw it away. You, do, you don't want to put the cap back onto it because it could mildew the head and you start having some fungusy problems that you really wouldn't like to deal with. That can happen very easily, especially with brushes 
that are a little bit of animal hair in it, where it really holds the moisture very well, you put it back on and you get that problem. Again, put it in some uh, nice warm water, cool water, whatever water you want, take that sizing off and it'll perform very, very well. That's, that's number one, believe it or not, that seems very easy, doesn't it? But sometimes, and we have lots of different brushes here that uh, we can take the caps off of, and it's the same thing, take it off and throw it away. No matter what it comes in, no matter whose it is, whoop, take it off and throw it away, okay? Um, that's the cap, not the brush. Um, one of the things that also happens quite often times, and this is of course an extreme case, this is um, brush hair that's gone all, all around the world. This is really some crazy stuff, isn't it? How many of you have had hair that you can't get to go back and you're very aggravated about it because you paid a lot of money for the brush and you're wondering, well, why can't I get that to go back in? Perhaps it's the surface you're working on. Perhaps it's the medium you're working on on the surface. Well, no matter what the reason is, we all want the brushes to go back and perform the way it was. Now, I have had people say they took the brush and threw it away, or they took the brush when it looks like this and they cut it. That's not necessary. It really is not necessary. We want you to be able to use this brush for years and years to come. So what is this? This is a Just little can dish. Zoom of, in a little bit so you can right. kind of show that. Actually show the, the yeah. hair that's going all, all the over damage the place. There. Yeah. Now what I wanted to show you is that here's an animal hair. This is hog bristle. This is a synthetic. This is the bristle on. This is the silver silk 88. Also that's synthetic. 100% yeah. synthetic. And this is the um, newly designed golden natural this is a blend of animal hair and synthetic fiber, which gives you a wonderful absorbency and, of course, that marvelous bounce that you get with synthetic filament. But look look how it looks. It's, it's all over the place. It's got hair going in every which way. But your point is what you're going to show people works for any kind of brush, synthetic, kind of natural brush. hair, or a blend of, exactly. of the two. So let's start with the, the synthetic hair. And this, believe it or not, is a, a liner. So. This is very hot water. We've got to leave it in there for a couple of minutes. Start pushing around. While you're doing that, Mom, we've got a few people checking in here. Do you remember sure. Rajat, who we met in uh, Germany at the trade show? I don't uh, from remember. India. Okay. Rajat had. Uh, he had that really cool hat. Oh, uh, yes, he was a yes, talented yes, artist. Yep. Yes. So Rajat is here saying hello. Hi, Rajat. How you doing? And uh, Ann Pisto is checking in from Aurora, Colorado. So Hi. thank, thank Hi, you all yes. for saying hello. Um, a few other folks. Oh, Rosie Huart in, uh, I believe, Indiana or Ohio. Okay. I apologize, Rosie. Uh, one of our silver brush educators in the Midwest. Hi. Um, and she does a great job. And uh, so she's in and says hello as well. This could be a little hotter, this, this water, but that's okay. We'll, we'll use it as it is. What happens with um, boiling hot water, it starts to relax the hair, and it starts to go back into its original shape. Now, I'm also going like this with it so that I'm grooming it to go back into its shape. And notice, before you probably thought it was completely unusable, right now you probably can use it as an artist brush, can't you? That's a very nice liner. Um, let's work... Now that's 100% synthetic. This is the this is the silver silk 88. What I'm doing is with boiling hot water that I've put into the microwave for about two three minutes, I'm relaxing the hair, and it's giving it a chance to go back to its original shape. Now this could be a little bit hotter. I did this a few minutes before the uh, actual uh, Facebook live, and it's starting as you can see. It's starting to go back to its original shape. Now this has some very, very dry paint in it also. And once again, I work it with my hands so that it goes back into its original shape. And it's not perfect yet. I would actually do it one more time so that uh, I know that the hair goes back. But it's beginning to be go back to a terrific brush and completely usable again. Remember, the whole idea, the goal is to save the brush so that it doesn't, um, it, it doesn't become unusable. So that's what we're doing right now. You can let it dry, or you can use it while it's wet, and you can use, of course, watercolor, acrylics, anything you want. This is the Golden Natural. This is the blended hair, golden tacklon, and animal hair. And uh, this is a wonderful watercolor brush. Uh, I just uh, redesigned this. It's got the new looking handle. You can see that the darker hair is the animal hair in this. And 
once again, it's going to go back into its original shape. This is a round that actually does not like to be in a fiber all over the place, but that, that's not even boiling hot water. I mean, that's just loop water. Notice how nicely it comes back into its original shape. If you don't like that angle, we just uh, moisten it and put it into another angle. But this, there's nothing wrong with this brush that you can't use on watercolor paper, on canvas, on wa walls, on furniture, or anything else. It just keeps on working its way. Notice how really terrible it looked before, and notice it just came back into its original shape. Uh, you want to show that? Oh, sure. I know you're always focused on the point and how important it is that a good quality brush comes back to a nice fine point well, for the artist. Well, it is. You know, you want a sharp needle point like this, and you want a nice edge like any of these flat brushes over here. That's what you're paying for. You want the fine edges as well as the, the needle sharp points because that's what really holds the color and lets you do your art design any way you choose. Um, that's very, very important. What um, is also important is these little tricks can save you thousands and thousands of dollars on purchasing new artist brushes. So that when you go in and you have a list of the golden natural brushes that you have already, what you can do is check off the ones you have and then you can get new ones of different shapes that you don't have yet. This, uh, this particular brush, this uh, golden natural brush, now comes in something called ultra round, which is a nice long, big fat belly with a long narrow tip. And uh, Warren and I are looking for one to show you so that uh, you get an appreciation of what the ultra round looks like. Do you have any over there? I don't uh, know if we have any over there. I have them close by. You have them close by. I'll okay, right thank now. you. So this, this is something that's going to hold a huge amount of moisture which is what you want, especially when you're painting in you know, watercolor, if you're painting uh, on silk, uh, you know, s on silk, the fabric silk, if you're painting, here you go. This is um, a very, very nice brush. This is the Ultra Round, and this is something we designed with a nice big fat belly and a very, very long tip. So, is that if you want, one? If you want to compare a oh. regular round to the Ultra there Round you so you can see the difference in there the lengths you, you versus know, the belly. You can see that. You can see that yourself. You can see that you get a nice long tip over here, a nice belly over here, and you'll be able to do those extra long lines that you prefer to do. And whether the lines are for flowers or for faces or for still lifes or um, figurative drawing, whatever it is, you can use the uh, new Ultra Round. I think it's extremely popular. We have it in three different uh, types of brushes, and I think you'll love it in the Golden Natural. But here you go, it's, it's still staying together. All I did was take boiling hot water, which is what this is, and still you get some water over there, hot water, and um, you put the brush in it, and you actually cured it from, from its little problems of going all over the place. Now, the reason why I have this one is because this is 100% natural hair, and this actually should be a lot harder to, hotter to do this one. This is a hog bristle. And this, too, is going in lots of different directions. Let's see if we can get this to soften and then let it be malleable so that we can push it back into its original shape. The most important thing, actually, I should do is make this hotter. This may be more difficult with uh, the hog bristle. But the same thing uh, holds true. Get it to be nice and hot, and you'll be able to put this back into its original shape. Well, I'll get that back there. You'll see, we'll have uh, some hot water brought in in a couple of minutes, and that will work like that. That's one, this is one tip that's really important. What else happens is, suppose you've been using this brush for a really long time, like over a year, and you've got paint here inside the ferrule, all around the ferrule, and you've heard whatever you can do, you cannot get the paint out, and the hair is just flying all over the place. The boiling hot water method works for this as well. What you want to do is get boiling hot water, and maybe we can get this warmed up a little bit. Put the, put the brush in here to about here. And you'll see that what happens is, if you could put that in for about two minutes, please. Um, you'll see that what happens is, as it's draining, you're going to see the colors come out, especially if it's acrylic color. It doesn't happen that much with watercolor, but it, it can you'll see that the color starts to come out like a rainbow. Now, I can almost guarantee the paint's going to come out with the boiling hot water method 
if it's been drying for up to a year. If it's more than a year, I can't guarantee it because it just seems to become like a brick inside and it's very, very difficult to get it out. So if you can get to your brushes within a year of using it and you know you have paint inside the ferrule, give this boiling hot water method a try because it probably will work for the brush. And that way you'll have the use of the brush again, which is great because you've paid for it, it's, it's a lot of money, and now you'll get more usage out of it. Notice I'm drying my brushes flat like this. One of the best, this is a fun thing, I just, I just put this together uh, recently. I don't know if you can see that little, uh, it's like a little hands over here, and I, I got the brushes drying flat. What I do also is I like to dry it so that the head goes down. This is an ashtray. My brother-in-law gave me this ashtray, which I thought was great. And um, notice the, more, the head is, is drying down. Well, if you dry a brush like this, what's happening? Well, the moisture's going inside the ferrule. We don't want the moisture to go inside the ferrule because even though this, this particular brush, this particular brush, has triple epoxy barriers inside, if you let it dry like this, you're gonna to start to corrode some of those epoxy barriers. And the last thing we wanna happen, want to happen, is let the moisture hit the handle and then starts to crack the handle. I'm sure you've all had that experience. And it's not a great thing. You really don't want that to happen because you feel like you're, the brush is deteriorating. When it's actually not, but you still don't want the handle to crack. So here's the thing you want to do. You want to try it, to dry it with the head going down. Now I've done this cute trick with the ashtray. If you don't have an ashtray, you can always just let it dry like this. Lots and lots of artists just dry their brushes like this. Putting your brushes like this to dry is a recipe for the moisture going through the, the barrier. And that's not something you want to do. Okay, so this, this is fun. This is a little ashtray. This is another one. Same thing. Any size ashtray that you used to use because you don't smoke anymore, I hope. Uh, that's one of the good things. Let's put that like that. And it's the same thing. Try to get that head to, to dry down. Okay? That's the best way to get uh, a brush to dry and uh, you won't have problems with the moisture going into the ferrule. Okay, now let's take this over here. I think we're gonna get that hot water back. It's on its way. On Question its way. for you while you're while sure. we're setting this up. Sure. Um, Darren White. Yes, Hi, Darren. Darren. Darren's question was, the hot water. Uh, can I use this for my oil brushes? Okay, Darren, that is a very good question. Clean the brush as much as you possibly can. Get all the color out of it. What do you clean it with? You want to use an odorless solvent to clean, whether it's synthetic brushes, synthetic blend brushes, or 100% animal hair. You want to use an odorless solvent, but you don't want to use an odorless solvent from a big box store, a big hardware box store. You want to go to your fine art supply store and buy an odorless solvent from a reputable art supply company. And that's because they will not damage your brushes. That, that odorless solvent from a fine art supply manufacturer will not damage your brushes. The stuff you get from these big box stores can easily damage your brushes. So you put all that money into it, maybe you spent $30 on a brush, which I consider a lot of money, and I'm, I'm very cognizant of your money. I want to take care of you and your money, and so you're not wasting it. Um, it's important for you to not use a solvent that's going to destroy your brush. So yes, you can make sure you clean it with an odorless solvent, take that all that off. You might want to clean it with a, a master's brush cleaner or something like that, which I like an awful lot. And yes, then if you have curling, if you have hairs going all over the place, notice how nicely this came right back into its original shape. And that's the boiling hot water method. But again, you might have pa paint all the way up here in your ferrule. Happens all the time. Just by moving the color on your surface, you're pushing the color up into the ferrule. Well, you know what? That's what the boiling hot water method is good for also. Remember, if it's older than a year, I don't guarantee anything. Because <clears throat> it really dries inside the ferrule and it, it's almost like a, a paste or something really thick and it's very hard to get it to melt. So I put it down for about um, up to here, 
in the furrow, about halfway, and that you'll start seeing it to melt. It's going to start to melt. So what happens, what I do is I take a uh, clean, lintless, lintless towel and I start to pull the color out. You want to start to pull the color out very, very gently. You certainly don't want to tug and, and, and destroy the brush with your own hands. You'll see that the colors start to come out. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again until the, the brush runs clean. Once it runs clean, then, then you could just start all over again. You have a whole new brush. And isn't that great? It doesn't cost you anything, and you've got, you've got the ability to use this brush again. Please, do not cut the hair that you see over in a different place. That really can destroy a brush, and you, you've paid for that. So let's not do that, okay? All right. A couple other uh, hellos for you, Mom. Uh, Jill Hagland, uh, oh, one hi. of our silver brush educators. She yes, checked hi. in, says hi. Hi. Uh, I told you about Rosie. Uh, let's see, Darren White we talked to about the oil brushes. Uh, who else am I talking to here? Whoops, all the way down, all the way up. Oh, Noaletta Cardena, she's in Tri-Cities, Washington. Hi. She's with us as well. Okay. So we're all over the place. Wonderful. All right, let's, let's talk about, and I spoke to my educators about this, <clears throat> uh, I think it was last week. Um, this is a, something that you should do before you actually start to paint. Can you think of anything more obnoxious than when you're going to paint and hair comes out? Hair comes out in your painting. And you're looking at it and there's a hair. I, you know, I've seen artists do this and this, they fight the frustration of having a hair come in so they use a tweezer and they do this and they do that. Well, I find it really annoying. So what I want to teach you is what they taught me in brush factories throughout the world. This is called knifing. This is the last thing they do with brushes before they actually pack them up and ship them to us. And that's this. What I'm doing is looking for loose hair. This is particularly true with goat hair brushes. Uh, lots of brushes should be uh, knife. They're all actually knife. But what I'm looking for with goat hair brushes, it's very difficult a lot of times to capture the hair inside the ferrule with the gluing. What you want to do is try and get any loose hair out of the brush. And it's very gentle. This is a plastic knife <clears throat> that um, I, I don't know where I got this one. Sometimes you can get it from fast food or just you know one of those packages you get at home. And I use the back of it. I don't use the front of it because I don't want to cut the hair. I want to be gentle and just use the back of a little butter knife, plastic, not, not metal, and just pull it like this very, very gently. If there are any loose hairs, you're going to pull it out by doing this. Okay, you're going, to, you're going to take it out before it even touches anything. Nice that this brush doesn't have any, but let's go to another one. This is another goat hair brush, and I can see one right there. And I'm doing this with this, uh, and that's white, so that's going to be a little harder to see, but you can see a couple of hairs over here. And I, I don't, as I said, I, I can't think of anything more obnoxious than having hair come out in your painting. So you want to take, make sure you, do, you knife your brushes before you actually start with them. If it's nice and soft like this goat hair, it's going to be more prone to having loose hair because it's just difficult to capture the uh, hair in the gluing and also the crimping over here at the edge of the ferrule. But you want to make sure that you open it up and you pull out any loose hairs that there are. So maybe you could just briefly go over for folks the construction of the brush so they understand you know, why that is normal and it's, it's not something that's a defect. Uh, in a goat hair brush? Well, no, there, it, that is not a defect in a goat hair brush, and that's a very good question. So goat hair, by its very nature, is extremely soft. At least ours is. I can't talk about anybody else's brushes. Um, by its very nature, it's so extremely soft that that's the reason why you buy it, because you want something very, very soft so that you can get that background blending or get the gloss off a person's uh, portrait face. And you want something very, very light and very, very soft. Well, that soft hair is very difficult to capture all at once. So we do have to do that. So the first thing that happens before it goes into the ferrule, it's glued over here. And then once it goes into the ferrule, it's glued again in the back. So that, you, that way you've got two gluings over here. But because of the nature of the hair, it's very, very soft. 
and it may just fly out. That's all. It just might come out very easily. So I do this. But that shouldn't happen over time, right? You're just talking about a I'm new brush with a quality, well-made brush. Well -made brush. Right. Once the, the, the loose hairs do come out initially uh, over time, there, there shouldn't be any more. That shouldn't be a persistent problem. That is true. And if you go like this and a whole clump set comes out, that means it's missed the gluing in the ferrule. Now, I've never had a brush sent back for that ever. So um, it's not something that's going to be germane to silver brush because these are, made, uh, these are very high quality brushes. But you will, you will get occasional loose hair uh, with goat hair. Now you can also do this with a synthetic filament. If you feel that you, you want to make sure that no loose hairs are going to come out, you can do that with a synthetic filament, so which is what this is. What is that made of? This is golden tacklon. And you all have probably have golden tacklon in your art supply boxes. Uh, you, you probably use it all the time and you didn't even realize that you are. So that's our, our jumbo brush. This is one of our quills. This is 100% synthetic fiber. And this too, I would just, I would um, knife this as well. This is 100% goat hair. This is a quill, and you use this for blending. And this too, I would just take, it's an easy thing to do. It doesn't take a lot of your time, and it's well worth the effort so you don't have that nasty, persickety, persnickety hair inside your, in your, inside your paintings. Okay. A few more uh, people to say hello to. Penny Warner. Hi. Checking in. She, she's uh, interested in the loose hair tips. Sure. Uh, Vicki Ojeda is in Southern California. Hi, Vicki. Uh, Carol McCready just checked in from New York. Nice to see you. I'm glad you're joining us today. So, no matter what you're using, and here I just opened this um, silver white brush, if you feel that you've got a loose hair, go right at it. You can just try and, and knife this as well and see if it comes off. It's not going to hurt the brush at all, especially I'm not yanking, I'm just doing it very gently, which is what you're going to do. And just make sure that you do that before you put it on the painting, and you'll see there won't be any loose hair. And you know, that's something that um, really helps you as a painter, and it gives you a nice painting experience, which is what we're all about. So maybe, maybe you're used to, um, maybe you've seen our black velvet brushes in the past, and maybe you haven't. But black velvet is an extraordinary brush that paints in watercolor, specifically watercolor. And um, what I wanted to show you today is our Voyage brush. Our Voyage brush is uh, very unique because it comes apart and you'll be able to put it like that and you can put it in your pocket, like in my pocket over here in my apron. What's really special about this brush and that you make sure you look for it when you buy a travel brush. I prefer if you bought ours, but I, we understand we have competition. Notice that this has a hole. This is a hole right here. Let me take that out so you can see it in white. It has a hole at the end. For the same reason I tell you not to put the cap back on the other brushes, you have to make sure that air goes into the head of the brush so it doesn't get mildew and it doesn't get gummy, and it doesn't get all, um, you know, it, it doesn't give you a lot of problems. The other thing that happens because of the air, it allows the, the head to dry, so you're not going around with a moist brush, which could possibly become mildew and, and rot and all that other stuff. I just thought I'd mention that in this particular brush because it's a very unique series for that. Keeping brushes drying flat, keeping brushes that this is a, a little fun thing I've put together. Um, you can get something like this that will help you dry your brushes. This is made out of foam, and they, they dry beautifully just like that. Keep it like this. Do not let a brush lay in water all night. That's a good way to kill the brush. It really is. You want to take brushes out of the water, and if nothing else, let it dry like that. Um, probably some of the uh, most unhappy people out there are folks that allow their brushes to stay in water overnight and they come back and God knows what the brush looks like. It's, it becomes quite problematic. Try and find anything you can to find a clean space and allow your brush to dry, whether it's on an ashtray, a little foam rubber, or just on the table. You know, find a clean space and let your brush dry flat. Letting them dry with this is not the answer, okay? You probably all have old coffee cans or something along that lines. I used to call on a, a store in New York, and uh, maybe some of you remember the name, David Davis in New York, and um, 
He used to merchandise all the brushes and coffee cans all around his store. And it was very clever of him, but it's no way to let a brush dry. Um, right in, if you remember David Davis in New York, it shows you how time marches on. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is um, lots of ways to clean brushes. Um, one of the things that's important with um, oil, co oil color brushes is to make sure you put moisturizer back in the brush head. Um, these solvent uh, based cleaners, even if they're odorless cleaners, lots of times dry out brush hair. So you want to find something that actually moisturizes the head. And I believe that they carry a moisturizer in art supply stores. That's the one that I would use uh, because it just adds a little more lanolin back into the brush head and it makes it nice, nicely soft and flexible. What happens with something like this, which is 100% hog bristle, it's going to get dried out after a while, after you clean it very, very thoroughly. If we don't put some moisturizer back in the head, it's very much like your own hair. I'm sure you use cream rinse periodically on your own hair, and it makes it nice and soft. Well, that's what you kind of have to do with this as well. We need to soften it up, make sure it gets some nice moisturizer in it, let it go back, and it'll just keep on painting. Uh, any more questions over there? Uh, so... Penny in Louisiana was asking about uh, where she could order. She's in Louisiana, but she's not near New Orleans. Uh, so I mentioned Moe's and um, David Art Center in, uh -huh. uh, in the city, but uh, that's far for her. So we're talking about some of our great online uh, distributors. Um, Noaletta mentioned that she buys from the Brush Guys, uh, who are based in Southern California. That's right. Um, and I also mentioned, you know, of course, Jerry's and Blick and Hyatt's. Um, we talked about the brush guys, so, so plenty of, of options there uh, for her. And the Black Velvet Voyage is available in a lot of places for sure. Actually, all those places that he just listed, uh, the, the Voyage is definitely there. Um, I don't know anybody at this point that doesn't carry them. And, it, and for those of you in India, um, AS International also Tarun. carries it. Yes, Tarun. Uh, Tarun, Tarun. Uh, who's based in New Delhi, uh, yes. is a great distributor of ours, yes. AS International, and he has a good website in India. All right, just a couple more things. I know that we have about 10, 15 more minutes. So if you have questions, start sending them to us now. So, okay, well, good. I was gonna ask this. Jennifer Harvey asked a great question uh, that I missed. Uh, what would you use to moisturize the brush with? So you mentioned use moisturizer. Go to the shampoo department in your, in your uh, grocery Pharma store. Or pharmacy, or your, yeah. Or your pharmacy, drugstore, and find a cream rinse with no balsam. You don't want balsam in it because that's some sort of a, a, an ingredient that actually might harm the brush. But just get any kind of a nice cream rinse and that's what you can use. You're not going to leave the cream rinse in. You're not going to paint with cream rinse. You're going to wash it out before you, um, before you leave the brush actually. Because what you want to do is you want to put it in and then take it, take it out by hand. You don't necessarily want to wash it off, but you want to take it off by hand uh, if I put the cream rinse on here, I would probably go like this. So I'd leave a little bit in, in it till next time, and then I'd wash it out when I go to paint the next time. But meanwhile, you've got a nice softener in there, and you're going to see it's, it makes the brush very, very soft. It really does, and it keeps it very, very pliable. So how long can you keep your hog bristle brushes? A lifetime. You really can, especially with a silver brush. Um, okay. Well, we've got a couple of other things I wanted to show you what happens with um, what we make brushes. So brushes are made in very interesting ways. They are, uh, they're... You they're, said cream rinse, just uh, Anne O'Brien Gonzalez, another one of our silver brush educators, is just confirming you mean uh, conditioner, right? I'm sorry, I meant conditioner. If I said cream rinse, and, well, it's the same thing. Cream rinse and uh, conditioner, it's the same thing. Okay, um, just confirming. Yes, it, and that's what, that's what I use. Um, it's, it just puts a little bit of moisturizer in here. Um, I had seen a nice moisturizer in an art supply store years ago. I think it was discontinued. It was from somebody in Texas, um, and I liked it. It was a pink color, and it, I thought it worked very, very nicely. Um, I'm not sure that it's still being made, if you must know. Um, yes, we should be making things like that, but we have not had the opportunity or um, the uh, time to actually get that done because um, we, we're always so incredibly busy here doing 
our thing with, with artist brushes. So um, those liquids are, are made and manufactured by other companies, and, but you want to go into an art supply store to buy it. The, the cream rinse or the conditioner, you can get, like I said, in any um, commercial uh, supermarket or uh, drugstore, and make sure that it doesn't have balsam in it, B-A-L-S-U-M, and um, I believe it's S-U-M or S-E-M, and um, it'll work very, very nicely on the, on the hog bristle. Remember, a hog bristles like this. And, and Rosie, Rosie asked the follow-up question, is the moisturizer only good for oil brushes? Well, I would say that you could put it in synthetic brushes too, it won't harm the... Uh, but any oil. natural hairbrush, for any sure. Any natural hairbrush, yeah. absolutely, any natural hairbrush. So let's look at this for a minute. So this is a side view of natural hair. So the natural hair, of course, it's all porous over here. It's completely porous. This is actually a hollow tube, and these are follicles on the outside. So, it, and our hair is like that too. And what happens is the moisture really get collects inside the hair itself. So we, our goal is to get all that color out, but it's a natural hair, so you want to put some, uh, something light to, to keep it moist, and so it doesn't get hard and brittle, which a lot of uh, times oil color and then the cleanup will make it kind of hard and brittle. So by putting a little moisturizer on it when you're finished for the day, um, it actually will keep this nice and pliable. And this is the side view of a, of a natural hair. All right, good question here from Elena. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna try to pronounce that last name, Elena. Zelyaskova. Zelia okay. um, I have the silver brush black velvet for a year, uh, but the tip is getting bent. Any okay. tips on fixing that? I, I don't do. leave it in water. I leave it to dry flat. Good girl. I'm glad to hear that. Take your brush, put it in boiling hot water, loosen it, make sure it gets nice and loose, because what you're using is not hot. What you're using is either, it's probably room temperature. Put it in boiling hot water, and go like that. You'll get a nice tip. And if you don't like the tip, you can just push it a little bit, and there's your tip. Okay, you've got to relax it, you've got to take whatever's in it, out of it, and you have to push it back into its original, the original way it came to you, without any paint in it, without any, any sizing in it, and it'll go right back to its original shape, especially black velvet, I and mean, you're not going to have any problem with that, I promise. Anything else? Nope. Okay, okay. let's move on. This is our uh, golden, uh, this is a golden uh, Taclon brush, this is our silver jumbo. Um, we have a whole series of jumbo brushes. We have it in a um, we have it in a, a white tacklon, which is stiff. We have it in a bristle, and um, we and we have it in golden tacklon. And I wanted to make sure that you know. First of all, you guys are make, doing paintings bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. My goodness, you huge paintings that I've seen come out of art supply stores. And when you're not painting. Huge canvases, you're painting walls and furniture and all kinds of big items. Well, I think our jumbos are the best ones on the market. I really do. And this is the silver jumbo brush. And what makes it better than anyone, thank you, is um, not only the quality of the hair and the epoxy that is holding it inside the ferrule as well as the crimping, but we also make sure that there are four nails all around the base of the ferrule holding it onto the handle. You're not going to have that flying head that sometimes uh, our competitors have. It's not going to happen with these brushes. This is a wonderful brush, very easy to hold. I uh, actually have some arthritis in my hands and I have no problem holding this brush at all. It's a lightweight brush and uh, you'll be able to use it all day long in those very, very large surfaces. You're painting backgrounds, what a wonderful brush to paint backgrounds with. It goes very, very quickly. You can use it one, one color into another and it just works very, very nicely. Um, we also have that, as I said, in the golden tacklon, the same thing, with four nails all around the ferrule. And this is our hog bristle. Now this, this particular brush is different from other um, jumbo brushes out there because this is called a chisel fitch. And you see this has the gradation over here. And um, this was actually made, the, the style of this was to paint signs years ago. If you remember old sign painters on, on uh, the highways and they were painting signs, they don't do that anymore. They actually have it all made and they just glue it up there now. 
um, or they change it because it's a neon sign. But this, this is a brush that will last you the rest of your life because of the way it's made and um, the amount of color that it holds. It's a durable brush. It's got triple epoxy barrier within the ferrule to hold the head and the handle onto the handle, the ferrule and the head onto the handle. And um, it's made of very, very high quality hog bristle. And this too will hold, or, of course, work with oil color just beautifully and acrylic color. And um, this whole, this does sign painting and walls and furniture and anything that you need. I know that there's a paint they call chalk paint, which is very rough on brushes. This is a great brush for that. And um, we've, we've seen a lot of different um, texture and different kinds of brushes that have come out from all over the world. And uh, these are just extraordinary, extraordinary quality, it really is. And I'm always excited to talk about the jumbos because I don't think there's anything that can hold its candle to that. Again, um, and notice how this became the color of what I was painting, and that is a unique problem with white tacklons. If I want, if it bothered me, I would actually use some um, uh, alcohol, alcohol, and it probably would take the color out of here. This happens when I'm using a cadmium or a phthalo color, and it probably can dye the color. And, but if nothing will happen, it'll just stay there and it won't affect the next color that I'm using it in. I'm going to jump in and, and ask you Darren's question. So this is Darren White. He was speaking earlier. He was the oil painter. Um, he's, he's sort of following up saying, if the paint is really dry in the brush, can you use a paint stripper or would that mess with the bristles? So the answer is no. You can't use a paint stripper because not only will you strip the, the handle of its, <laughs> the handle and its color, you'll also probably destroy the brush. Um, it, it really dries the filaments out. I've seen um, people use that stuff and then the hair starts to crumble because it takes all the moisture out of uh, hog bristle altogether. What you want to use is an odorless solvent. You shouldn't be using that stuff anyway. It's not healthy for you. And just keep on trying to use um, the odorless solvent to try and get it out. Use the boiling method. Put it in here and use boiling hot water. It might really help it. If it's been in there over a year, I can't guarantee anything, but you can try that. Um, there's no guarantees with paint stripper. It, it really is a, a vicious medium and um, well, when we When we talk furniture. about odorless solvent from an art material store, you're usually talking about like terpenoid or Gamsol, something like that. That is Nothing. right, and there's also one from um, Grumteen, I believe, from Grumbacher, and there's also, um, I'm not sure if Williamsburg has one, I don't remember, um, but anyone that has those kinds of, there's a couple of others that just, uh, companies that just make solvents for art supply stores. I know there's one out of New York City, a lavender type, which is very nice. And um, I, I thought it worked very, very well. And, um, but in an art supply store, they're not gonna sell outside the, uh, the art supply um, model because- oh, He says he uses Gamsol. Great. That's just great. It really is. It won't be harmful to you and it won't be harmful to the brush. That's what, I'm always, that's what I always care about. Let's keep in mind something that's really important. When you use turpentine on a synthetic brush like this one, this, the Bristolon and the Silver White that you've just paid $20 or $30 for, or Ruby Satin, or um, Black Pearl, what's going to happen with this in turpentine? Can you tell us? Maybe you'll write to Warren and, and let, it, let him tell you. Well, tell us remember that happen. Facebook's on a delay, so oh, okay. we don't want to wait here for 30 okay, seconds. Okay, so let's not wait. <laughs> What's going to happen is if you put this in turpentine, it's synthetic fiber brush, and it doesn't matter if it's from silver brush or from big, some big um, paint brush company that sells um, hardware brushes, it's going to start to melt the filament. Melt, M E L T. It's going to start to melt the filament. And I can't think of anything more horrifying than you've just spent all this money on a brush and you've put it in this rough solvent that I've just told you not to ever use um, because you bought it in a hardware store instead of an art supply store. And what happens is it starts to curl. You see it, it starts to curl. Maybe you'll get a little couple of flecks that come up and you'll see it starts to curl. And you know what I can do with that? Nothing. I can do absolutely nothing. I have tried so many times over the years to bend back the hair. I've used the boiling pot method. I've used a cleaner. I have I put rubber bands on it and tried to straighten it out. Nothing works. 
If you melt the filament with, with a turpentine, there's nothing you can do with it. You might as well throw the brush away or just use it for scrubbing or something else. But that wasn't the function you bought it for. You bought it to paint in your, in your artwork. So let's take good care of the brushes and they will last you a very long time. Okay? Are we? Great. Yeah, you're good. I'm good? Yeah. I want to thank you all very much for coming. Wait, one more hello. Daniela Castro, our new newest supplier in, in Chile. Chile. In... Oh, hi. She's a reseller. Yes. Yes. Hi, Daniela. How are you? I'm glad yes. to ha have you here. Um, if you're in Chile, uh, what's the name of her company? Somos Color. Somos Color. Uh, that's, that's our distributor in Chile. You're welcome to go to her. We'd love you to. Um, these are very, very fine brushes. Go to your art supply stores. There's lots of them that are opening right now. I know um, in Florida there's Art Systems of um, Art Systems is in uh, off on the East Coast, and as well as Sam Flax is in um, the um, I can't remember where they are, but they're Sam Flax in Orlando and uh, Atlanta. Uh, Orlando. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Everybody's hi hi hyping me for Orlando. I know Jerry's is open in West Palm Beach, so that's in Florida also. And um, we have a couple of folks that are in Sarasota, so we want to welcome you and open your store. Um, there's also Azel's Art Supply is opening. All their stores, I think there's nine or ten stores in the uh, Texas area, they're open. And I think Texas Art Supply is open as well. So Soho Art Supply is uh, doing curbside pickup in New York City. And we're thrilled that they're doing that. And they're going to start opening very soon, I think in another couple of weeks, or maybe next week. They'll be opening, and uh, Pinso in uh, Quebec, Canada, they're open also, and they carry a great deal of our brushes. Uh, Salt Bay Art Supply in Demara, Scott, uh, Maine, they're going to be opening as well. I know I sound like a commercial, but I really care about these brick and mortar stores, and I hope you do too. And um, make sure that you, you go to your art supply stores, they're our friends, and um, by going to them, you'll keep them open. So uh, have a wonderful day painting today. Take the tips and tricks that I've given you and start painting and enjoying your brushes. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you, everybody. That will conclude.